This is Slasher at the MLG New York Winter Arena, and I'm here with Grubby, now an independent StarCraft II professional. Uh, before we get into things, give you uh, give a brief background of your history, where you're from, how old you are, and how you got into StarCraft II. Hey dudes and dudettes at GameSpot, I am Grubby, my name is Manuel Schenkhuizen, I come from the Netherlands, and I've been in esports, being a professional athlete, for well, e-athlete, for about nine years now. Recently entered StarCraft II scene for about a year ago, and yeah, I've, I'm a pretty accomplished Warcraft 3 player, not to be confused with World of Warcraft, also an RTS, Warcraft 3. Won a lot of world championships there, and now I'm trying my hand at StarCraft 2. How would you compare your experience in StarCraft 2 so far to being Warcraft 3? I mean, of course, Warcraft 3, you won multiple international titles. You might be, you know, probably one of the biggest stars of all time in that game. Where here, you're having to fight with a lot more players, and it's kind of a bigger community and scene. It's okay, so long as you leave more and more people behind you. <laughs> Where you start, there's tens of thousands of people better than you. And if you see yourself improve day by day, that's an acceptable position for me to fight from. And I'm already getting to the point where I feel like I belong to Europe's best. I still just am waiting for that. Uh, well, not, I wouldn't say waiting. I'm actively working on it to obtain a ma first major victory. Uh, well, you entered this event with a, you know, a lot riding on you, and you had a pretty tough opponent in Naniwa in the first round, and you actually took a loss to him, 2-0, uh, uh, going down into the loser's bracket. Can you take us through how that match went for you? Yeah, of course, he's a tough opponent, and also I didn't have a lot of information about him. He always likes to start pretty aggressively, and I felt, well, I felt that I dealt pretty well with it in the first game. In the third game, I couldn't quite say exactly the same. Also, it brought me a little bit off kilter, off balance, and perhaps led me to make a wrong decision here or there. As for game two, the one I won, I felt very comfortable with it. I was doing my own plan, which I have practiced a lot, and I, I knew it was going to work. And yeah, it worked well. But uh, unfortunately, game one and three, I do feel like I disappointed myself and perhaps my fans a little bit with that, because it wasn't quite the best that I have to show. Now, I've had, uh, had a lot of discussions today with players that have had PvP as the matchup in the first round. Uh, I would say more so, most of them have said that it has not really been a coin flip, which previously a lot of players have said in maybe the past few months. Um, how are you feeling about that matchup right now? Yeah, I think it is, uh, there is still a sense of a possible build order advantage. And just to make it uh, clear to the amateurs there or people who are not quite so well known with what we do, there is a chance that you choose something which uh, you do on preconceived notions, which is going to be disadvantageous against what the opponent is doing in its, uh, in its very early stages. However, it doesn't mean that you end up losing the game. So there's, I do feel, like you said, that there is a lot more, um, I don't know, an active role in able to get the advantage to yourself, even if you're playing from behind. And the strategical variance of the PvP matchup has increased greatly. You can go Twilight Council, you can go Robotics Facility, you can go Stargate. Basically, all the options that are available to the Protoss race have become more viable with the recent changes that Blizzard has made. So I do feel like it has become a really interesting matchup, which now also includes taking expansions, so uh, getting more economy, and then even making greater possibilities. Naniwa is a, also an ex-Warcraft 3 player, just like yourself. I would say the StarCraft 2 situ situation is a little bit flipped from WarCraft 3, where you were a superstar and winning championships in WarCraft 3. And StarCraft 2, it seems like he's had more success uh, as of late. So how does it feel to be on, on the other side and trying to make your way to the top? Well, I wouldn't say it's, it's feeling like incredibly bad because i know i started late on starcraft 2 about a year later than the people who started playing in the early beta i was still playing warcraft 3 getting second place at the world cyber games so uh, it wasn't completely wasted time but it would have been nice to start a little bit earlier with starcraft 2 but it's not um it's not a deficit that i cannot eventually make okay i think um yeah i'm, I'm working on it and uh, i think i'm getting closer and closer uh, so now you've moved down into the loser's bracket, which you're going to be playing tomorrow, and you're going to be going up against Osira in that first round, who he lost to against Marine King uh, in his match. So you're going to be going up against a very strong Korean opponent in the first round of the loser's bracket. So what's your mentality going in? No, I feel like he's a, he's a person made of flesh and blood, and so am I. 
he is uh, he, he has mortal limitations so I mean he's just the player who I will be playing against he is of a certain race he's playing Zerg I'm playing Protoss that's all that really matters uh, yes he's strong but I will show him a thing or two hopefully is PVZ a matchup that you favor right now I I feel like PVZ has always been pretty good for me relatively but on the other hand i do feel like zurich is a pretty strong late game against protoss so there is a sense of discomfort in letting the game drag very far where they get units like the broodlord and investor who don't really have a natural counter by the protoss but if you're able to control the pace of the game well be very proactive and do a lot of different things at once try to pull them apart hurt their economy there's definitely a chance for you to uh, destroy Zerg opponents, so uh, oh, here I come. <laughs> I've been asking all the players this weekend what they thought about the new patch. Uh, most of Terrans and Zerg have talked a lot about it, especially between the TVZ matchup and the late game. But most Protosses have felt like there's not been any change in their style of play based upon the patch that has happened. You feel the same way? Yeah, the changes, while, while I feel that all the changes were good and well thought out, I, I don't think that they're going to have a very revolutionary impact on the Protoss matchups, like you said. Like, the Phoenix upgrade is quite late game. I have tested out the difference of having short-range Phoenix against Mutalisks and long-range Phoenix. While it is better, it isn't so uh, much of a hard counter that Mutas have become unviable. Uh, that's not the case. I, I think it's nice that it happened, but, I mean, there's still a chance that you get fungal growth on all your phoenix and that mutas will kill all of them so um there was a bit of an overreaction from zerg so they're like oh no we can't go mutas no no it's cool it's cool not much is going to change do you foresee yourself using that that ability at all uh well i've always liked the phoenix i've always liked taking the fight to the air against mutalis and i have to say i haven't had a single practice game yet where it happened that the opponent went mutalis perhaps psychologically they have veered away a bit from it so um, I'm going to have to postpone my answer to you uh, regarding that. So this uh, MLG Winter Arena event is uh, a new type of event that MLG has happened, kind of an experiment of how they want to do events this year before the uh, larger convention side uh, convention uh, set of events. Uh, it's more like the GSL event in Korea where it's inside of a studio. Uh, there's more of a controlled space, more of a, there's no crowd here really uh, to cheer people on. Uh, how do you feel about, um, what's your initial reaction to this event as a whole? Oh, well, personally, I like when there's a big audience because the energy of the crowd usually takes me to greater heights. It, uh, it bolsters my spirit. It, it uh, creates more adrenaline. So I like that. I like playing for an audience. But on the other hand, like you said, it's a controlled environment. So there's nothing to complain. I know there's a lot of people watching at home. Um, we're going to get the ability to concentrate pretty well because it's not going to be too loud. And overall, of course, I'm fine with both. And every event is different, brings different sets of uh, experiences. Um, yeah, that's all. Would you rather have these type of events where it's more controlled and there's like a lower amount of players and it's inside? Um, uh, or would you rather have the, the bigger events? I'm thinking, you know, it just based off what you're saying, you're used to the large crowds, you're used to winning in front of lots of people, winning in China with like tens of thousands of people at, at one time. But, you know, in this type of event, you know, it's a, I would think it's easier to kind of maybe concentrate and focus because you don't have as many distractions uh, around you. If you had to pick between the two style of events, which would you have? I would choose to play for the crowd because... I mean, that's where it's all at. Yeah, the crowd. <laughs> it's all about the fans. All right, well, thank you, Grubby, and I wish you luck tomorrow. Thank you very much, Rod. Bye-bye, GameSpot.